Hi, friend. This is Marcus Stevenson, Jr., and we're so excited to have you tune in today to our broadcast. Uh, I tell you, it's just been a joy and a pleasure uh, just to be able to speak into your lives. And we realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is the same today as he was yesterday, and he's the same forevermore. Uh, we just want to encourage you to stay tuned in today as the Lord gives us words of encouragement. Uh, not only just words of encouragement, but I'm sure you would see something or feel something or hear something that would be a blessing to your life. Call a friend, call a neighbor, tell somebody to tune in uh, because the Lord has a word for you. You know, there's no such thing as coincidence in a child of God's life. I believe that every time that God connects you, he connects you for a supernatural reason. All throughout the Bible, God gave connections in the word of God. Uh, and I do believe in spiritual connections. This is a connection by God. Uh, as you continue to watch this program, you look on the screen and see ways you can stay connected with this ministry. Uh, we believe this is not just coincidence, as I just said. This is a supernatural connection. And I want to speak the word of God into your life. You know, I have really just been in, been in awe of the power of the word of God. And one of the reasons why I've been in such awe of the power of the word of God, because the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And every time I hear the word of God, it's like faith just leaps in my spirit. And I don't know who you are or what you are or, or whether you're saved or not saved. I, I want to encourage you that this word of God will build faith in you. You know, many years ago, uh, I heard the word of God that came into my life. And as the word was spoken, immediately faith came in. Now, I know that sounds kind of, um, you know, melodramatic to some people. It seems like I'm kind of adding more to that. But just think of it. The Bible said life and death is in the power of your tongue. One word, glory to God, one word can change your life. Just one word. If you was to get a phone call right now, and that was a phone call rather from the doctor, from the hospital, and it was to tell you that you had a certain sickness or a certain incurable disease, automatically the average person uh, will take that call and their whole life will be changed. Well, if one negative word can change your life, then one positive word can change your life. When God speaks, when he gives us words, these are words, not just to hear them without any reason, but words that come to influence and to cause change to your life. And as I say that, it's been in my spirit to uh, you know, really remind God's people about the importance of faith. And I want to talk to you about the Hebrews, the 11th chapter. You know, something very, uh, very, very common that most people have spoken and have preached on before. But I want, to, I want to really, really emphasize this back to you uh, as God's chosen people. Because you, sir, you, ma'am, are one of God's chosen people. If you look at Hebrews 11, chapter, verse number 6, the Bible says, But without faith, it is impossible. Now, I want you to see this. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So the first thing the Hebrew writer writes, he said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now we know if the Bible says something is impossible, we know that, that means it, it cannot be done. So without having faith, it is impossible to please God. And I'm here to alarm you as God's chosen vessel that you have to be very, very uh, uh, aware uh, when you allow the enemy to cut your ears off from hearing the word of God. I don't want you to get confused, but you have to be very, very aware from the enemy cutting your ears off from hearing the word. Why? Because if he cut you from hearing the word, he just cut off your faith. And he know once he cuts you from getting faith, you cannot please God. Because it is impossible to please God when you have no faith. How do you know? Because the Bible declares that by uh, uh, that, 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 that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So by the preach word of God, that's when faith hits. When you are pleasing to God, you're only pleasing to God because somewhere he saw that you have faith. So it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then he says, for he that come to God, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. This is why faith is so important. Thank you, Lord. It is so important because you won't even make an attempt to God. You won't make an attempt to come to God if you don't even have faith to believe he exists. 
Why do we see signs? Why do we see wonders? Why do we see miracles take place? Why do God give uh, uh, the different uh, uh, administrations of the Spirit? If you read the 1 Corinthians 9, I believe, he talks about the different gifts of the Spirit. He talks about the gift of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of faith. He talks about the interpretation of tongues, the discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, miracles, word of knowledge, prophecies. All these are there as signs and wonders. Why? A sign is a signal to signify to you that God actually exists. So many people didn't believe that God was real. So many people didn't believe that God existed until maybe a prophecy came, maybe a miracle, a healing came. And once that happened, uh, God proved himself that he's actually real. You say, well, how do you, how, how can you say that? I, I just choose to believe God. Yes, we all choose to believe him, but you couldn't choose to believe a God unless he proved that he existed. I made a choice to believe God, but the choice I made was after God proved himself to me time and time again. I'm here to excite your faith again. Pay attention to the signs that God are giving. The signs are there. Not just so we can be an awe of some great presence, but the sign is there to build your faith, to remind us as God's people that God actually exists. Some of you right now, this is a sign to you. The Lord would have us to speak on faith, would have us to speak on Hebrews 11 chapter, to remind you, hold to your faith. Did not the Bible say hold to the profession of your faith? Without wavering. What is he saying? No matter what it looks like, no matter what you're going through, keep professing your faith. Keep on speaking that faith verbally. Why? As I said earlier, life and death in the power of your tongue. Man of God, woman of God, child of God, I'm here to remind you that God is pleased by your faith. He's not pleased by how much money you have so much. He's not pleased because we have beautiful buildings. He's not even pleased because we have nice praise dancing and nice singing and, 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 and we can make nice dinners after church. What pleases God is your faith. Remember even Jesus all throughout the Bible, I believe in Matthew, Mark, and in Luke. And John may even account of this. He tells disciples to get into the ship, go to the other side. And the Bible said as they got into the ship, that immediately the storm arose. And Jesus told the disciples, he said, O oh, ye of little faith, how long must I be with you after he rebuked the storm? I'm here to tell you, irregardless of what storm is in your life, you have to allow your faith to be built up to the point where the storm does not make you doubt the faith that you have. And there's somebody watching this right now. you in the midst of a storm in life. You love the Lord. You care for God. You care about people. You're serving God. But the enemy is fighting you tremendously in the area of your faith. And one of the reasons why he's fighting you in your faith is because he don't want you to please God. Jesus made a statement that sticks with me. Almost every day of my life, the Lord brings this back to my remembrance. He said, I do always those things that pleases my Father. The thing that pleases our Father, the thing that pleases God, is our faith. Without it, it's impossible to please God. God looks at your faith all throughout the Bible. Remember the two fish and five loaves of bread? God wasn't pleased, uh, uh, you know, just because uh, the, the people was dealing with some because it was going through. Actually, he was grieved because he had compassion on them. He was touching his heart. He saw people was following him, and they didn't have sufficiency to follow him. They was hungry. But the moment that they said they had a little laugh, that they had two fish and five loaves of bread, Jesus knew, I have something to work with. Your faith may not be as great as somebody else's. But I always learned this. If you just use the faith that you have, God will magnify that thing. He will grow that thing. He will enlarge that faith. How do you know that? Because the Bible said we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. How does your faith increase when God works out something in this area of your life? Now you know and you believe and you are strong in your belief because you feel as though if God can do it one time, he can do it again. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody that's watching me right now. You are in a tough predicament in your life. You're in a rough moment in your life. 
And the enemy has spoken time and time again and tried to make you feel like that the thing that you are dealing with, that this thing will never change. That this storm, this problem is too big, it's too rough. And even though you know scriptures, even though God has did some for you before, he's trying to make you feel like this time God won't come through for you. You know, if Jeremiah was here, if Abraham was here, they would tell us that nothing is too hard for God to do. Friend, I'm talking to you. Your faith is on trial. The Bible said that the trial of our faith, so your faith got to stand trial. You're going to be tried in your faith. What is the purpose of having faith if it's not going to be tried? How did God know that Abraham loved him? He had to test him. He had to try him. And the Bible said that God told Abraham, take your only begotten son, Isaac, and offer him up as a sacrifice before me. And as soon as Abraham began to obey God and made the attempt to serve God and do what God say do, right before Abraham got ready to kill his only son, Isaac, God said, don't you touch him. But he said, now I know that you love me because you was willing to do what I asked you to do. How does God know that you love him for him? Unless you pass the faith test. I don't know where you at right now in this test. I don't know exactly how far you are in this test. Maybe you're just beginning this test. Maybe you're just beginning this trial. But wherever you at, I'm here to remind you that your faith will pull you through this situation. Watch this, friend. The Bible said it is impossible to please God without faith. Watch this. The Bible said, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The enemy's whole goal is to keep you from really seeking God like you should. Why? Because everyone that seeketh fight. There are some questions. There are some things that you're wondering about. There are some goals. There are some, there are some, some places that God has showed you in the realm of the Spirit. Some things that God has promised you. And the devil is trying to wear out the patience of you, his saints. But I'm here to tell you and remind you, don't lose your faith. You know God exists. He's already proven himself he exists. Some of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of you have been given miracles and healings. You've encountered prophetic manifestations. People have given you words of knowledge, words of wisdom. You knew it was God. Dreams and visions have came in your life. But now that you're in this circumstance, in this situation, the enemy has tried to affect you in such a way that he make you doubt the very God that brought you through. Remember what happened to the children of Israel? All throughout their, their lifespan, while Moses, God was using Moses to try to get them unto their land of Canaan. While they was in the wilderness is when they begin to doubt God. While they was in the wilderness is when they begin to second guess God. All the miracles he's done, all the things he did to prove himself to them. And yet and still, because they hit a wilderness experience, they begin to doubt him. Friend, don't be like those children of Israel. All because you're in the wilderness experience, it's not time to doubt God. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says this. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. God has sent His Word to you today. Why did He send His Word to you today, tonight, whatever this program is in? He sent His Word because He's proven Himself even again to exist. He sees where you at with your walk with Him. And he put a word in our mouth to remind you, without faith, you cannot please God. Seek him. He's a reward of them that seek him. How does he reward you? By showing you he'll never fail. The Bible said, heaven and earth will pass away, not one jot nor took his word to fail you. God is here to remind you that your faith is the thing that's going to get you past this storm. Oh, glory to God. I feel that so deep into my spirit. There's somebody's watching me. 
you're laying down as you're watching this program. And I want to speak this word into your life. Actually, I see you in tears as I begin to speak this. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me to minister to you and to tell you it is only a test. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is only a test you're dealing with. Hold to the profession of your faith without wavering in the midst of this test. You know, so many signs, so many wonders God has given us in this ministry. So many great prophetic manifestations. And we don't say that sounding proud. But so many great manifestations God has given us through this ministry. And, uh, I, you know, I, I really do believe that God has uh, supernaturally connected us. I want you to go to the phone. Some of you are listening to this. I want you to go to the phone right now and call us. Let us minister this word of faith into your life. Call us. Let us touch and agree with you. You see the number on your screen. Go to the phone. We're not here to condemn you, to put you down. We're here to remind you of the faith that God has given you by his word. It's impossible to please God without this faith. Go to the phone. Sir, ma'am, I'm talking to you. Go to the phone and stay connected to this ministry. You know, as we get ready to close this program here, uh, there are some things we would like to... Uh, like to show you and I want you to see this prophetic mantle God has placed in our life in action right now one of our recent services God has moved tremendously watch this friend we'll be back all the way down your back God is going God's healing you you don't need so much of healing in the front God's giving you healing from the back of your head all the way down to the back of your legs or in your back area God's healing you and it's moving for you as well like you're functioning but it's not full function like it needs to be God's moving upon your heart he's blessing you and he sent you here to build your faith up too because you're a woman that have faith but God's giving you an increase of faith you love God and you care for God you got a heart for God God have heard your prayers that's some prayers you sent up before God God, let me tell you, he heard your prayers. He's seen your prayer. Y'all don't know how to praise God in here. I said he's seen your prayers. And not only is God healing you, your body, but God's going to bring some things to pass. Here's some things you ask God, and the Lord told me to encourage you and tell you that this too shall come to pass. God has told me to confirm it tonight. He did have a whole shot. And I hear the Lord say so he give you confirmation he's going to do just what you asked him to do. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing. There it is. There it is right there. I feel the dead go right there. In the name of Jesus. Now she's been with us every night. I think last night she couldn't make it. But I'm so glad uh, I've never seen them as far as I know in my life. But I'm so glad they've made it here. Just tell her this rather than blessing to you. Hallelujah. Come on, give her a nice warm welcome here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. I just want to give honor to the pastor. Amen. The honor shepherd. Amen. To the beautiful woman of God. Amen. Of the church. Amen. To everybody that make up the household. Amen. Of, of God. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I just give honor to him. Amen. I, my life is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I just thank God, amen, for who he is, amen. I came here, I moved here from Kansas City, amen. I moved to Sherwood, amen. And I just thank God, amen, me and my husband, I, I, I'm a worshiper, amen. God have showed it to the man of God, amen. I moved here and I said, Lord God, I said, Arkansas just ain't been too good to me. I said, look like I need to go back home, but I just thank God, amen. We need restoration and revival, amen. God is so good, amen. I began to hear the man of God on the radio. I said, Lord, he sound good to me. He sound like he holy, amen. Somebody that you don't mind following, amen. I don't want to follow anybody, amen, because I believe in living a holy, clean, sanctified life, amen. He's a holiness without. No man should see the Lord. So I thank God, amen, as me and my husband began to listen to the man of God. I said, woo, he said, I th you think you want to go there? I said, I think I want to go. So I said, I'm going to use my Google because my husband is working, amen, and I like to give honor to him in his absence, amen. 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 Yes. And
and I said, I'm going to Google my way to Conway, Arkansas and find this place. So I came, amen, and I was looking. I came in expectation, amen. expecting, amen. I didn't come to spectate, amen, but I thank God, amen, as the man of God when he called me out, amen. I said, well, Lord, I thank you. You got a word for me, hallelujah. Y'all don't know what I've been through, amen. amen. I've been through hell, as they say, in high water, but I thank God that God carried me through yeah. as he did the Hebrew boys. But I thank God, amen, and I'm not going to stay up here too long, but I thank God, amen, that the man of God, amen, God showed him I was going through some things. I came down here, amen. I ended up having to have surgery. Never had surgery in my life, amen. And after I had the surgery that week, I failed the next week and broke my back. So I'm already dealing with pain and stuff before I had the surgery with my back and my neck. And I'm dealing with, you know, breaking my back on top of that. I said, oh, God, I look like I just need to go back home with my family. I'm a grandmother of 20-some kids, amen. I'm a great-grandmother, soon to be. So I just thank God. been married almost 40 years, amen, amen, to the same man. So I just thank God, amen, for who he is, amen. amen. But I thank God as the man of God spoken to my life. I said, Lord, that's confirmation. I needed that. Amen. amen. So I thank God for a real prophet of God. Amen. amen. I respect and I honor, amen, the woman of God and man of God. I just thank God for knowing that God going to do what he said he's going to do in my life. Amen. I thank God for confirmation. Amen. amen. God is good. And this revival, amen, has been a blessing to me. It has restored me. Amen. As the young lady said, I can agree with you. When you feel like nobody is there, when you're going through, you know, by yourself, Sometimes God gets you in a place, amen, to where you be by yourself, and you have to really serve God. But I thank God that this revival has been a yes. blessing to me. Yes. You have spoken to my life, and God has begun to start doing some things in my life. Yes. And I thank God. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, friend, I'm sure that you see how those people was blessed by God. You know, it's not us. We tell people we can't heal, we can't deliver, we can't make whole, we can't do anything. It is the grace of God that is on this ministry that does the work. And that same anointing is here right now for you. That same anointing, I feel it so strongly, is here right now for you. Call the number on the screen. Go to the phone. Let us pray the prayer of faith over you. I'm telling you, this has been in my spirit for the last several days about really getting back to believe in God. You know, you can keep getting knowledge. You can keep getting word after word. But the Bible says this. The Bible said that even after the word of God was preached, that the word didn't even profit some people. You know why? Because they mix no faith with the word that was preached. It's not enough to have good knowledge. It's not enough just to have a good Sunday school class or a good adult class or just to have good literature. You have to use your faith, even if your faith is small. The Bible declares that the mustard seed, which is the smallest of all the seeds, he said if you got faith just like a mustard seed, if you just sow that seed, that then that faith seed, that mustard seed will begin to grow. And I want to encourage you, as I spoke earlier, as you've seen these signs and wonders, I want to encourage you, if God could do it for them people, he can do it for you. You know, we can show you countless clips, countless videos of the, of the manifestations of God's existence in these services. But I believe with all of my heart that God has no respect to person. Rather, you healed in your natural body, and you have an inward hurt, an inward problem that you need God to do, go to the phone. Your faith is what makes you whole. God has built your faith up enough. He can heal you of all those past hurts. I got testimony after testimony. The doctor told me when I was a little kid that I had a certain type of arthritis. wouldn't be able to move my hands good. I used to, uh, I remember probably about 10, 15 years ago, I was dealing with something running up and down my chest. Didn't know what it was. Started coughing up blood. I was at work just spitting up blood, coughing up blood. Didn't know what to do. Fear tried to hit my spirit. But by my faith in God, by me seeking God, he rewarded me. Man of God prayed for me. My pastor laid hands on me. God gave me a divine miracle. You don't have to sit back and stay skeptical. You don't have to sit back and, 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 and just spectate and begin to wonder if God would do it. 
God would do anything but fail. Your faith is what made you whole. Before Jesus healed anybody, he always asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And most of the time, he would say, according to your faith, so let it be done to you. There's somebody standing by right now. Go to the phone. Man of God, woman of God, child of God. It may look like it's over. It may look like you're at your wit's end. But God is able to make all grace about it. Now somebody's watching me, you're dealing with the spirit of suicide. You at your wit's end. The devil told you to end it all. Throw in the towel. I am talking to you. Go to the phone. The Spirit of God is right, ready, and He's here now to take away that spirit of suicide that you are under. Your faith is what's going to make you whole. Do you not know that the Bible says that by faith, the elders obtain a good report. I believe that your faith is getting ready to change your report. Oh, glory to God. I feel that so intimate in my spirit. Whatever the report has been, there's somebody else watching me, and I see this, you're dealing with something around your stomach area. I don't know if it's a bladder issue or a kidney issue. Go to the phone right now. The Bible said Jesus sent his word to heal us out of all our disease. Why the word? Because once that word builds your faith, your faith is built up to the point where any sickness, you believe God is able to heal you out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's not nothing too hard for God. We got testimonies of cancer, testimony of diseases, testimonies of bones and all types of issues in the body. That God has healed and gave miracles of. Go to the phone right now. You see the number on the screen. Connect with this ministry. Do it right now. Watch God move for you. God bless you. We love you.